transaction SU01. Okay. Then insert another transaction SU03. So like that I can keep on adding transactions. So now I am going to create a user. Type SU01. SU01 is a very powerful command. A lot of authorization objects are accessed when a person uses that command. So that command can be very fine-tuned to reduce a person's power, right? So SU01, nobody has SU01 power except for you, security administrator. Basis guy doesn't have that power. Nobody else in the system has only security power. So they execute SU01. Then if I want to create a user, so in this case, whatever user I create, I start with Z or Y. In a, in a work environment, you don't have to do that for user, but you have to do that for roles. User, you can give any name. But for roles, you have to follow the rules. Very clearly, the rules given by the company. Follow that rule. Z or Y. And also, there are rules after that also, right? So they will tell you, this is the format you have to use to create roles. If you change the format, people get confused. They don't know what purpose that role is, for what department that role is. Yeah, sometimes we have something called derived role. So one parent role, from there we derive another role. So we use different uh, nomenclature in naming, right? So the naming is important, documentation is important. Any object in SAP you are creating should start in Z or Y. Uh, no, not necessary. If you put is good, right? Z or Y. Any, anything, right? But uh, not for users. For users, it's not applicable, right? Yeah. So I will create a role called Z test one. A user called Z test one. Z user one. Sorry, it's better for me to use the word user user one. So I can create him directly here or I can modify an existing user. Or I can just display him or I can delete him if he is there already or I can copy this user from another user and most often you will be using this button because user sometimes gives his password wrong. So if he gives his password wrong he will be locked. If he gives his password three times or five times, based on the settings, we will talk about those settings also. Then uh, we can change his password here. Right? So now I, I don't have this user, so I have to create. So I click on create. So I'm creating a brand new user. I'm not copying from anybody. So there are many tabs here. The tabs here can vary a little based on some say, some uh, some uh, settings in the environment. So we'll talk about that later. Okay. And then if I try to go to the logon data, it won't allow me. See, it won't allow me because the last name is a mandatory field. So last name for this guy is Tam. Okay. Then. If I try to go again, it will give me a problem again. If I say fax number, it's wrong. By default, in version ECC 6, they have a fax number. In ECC 5 and R3, they didn't have this, right? So you have to either delete it or put a, put a right one. So I delete it, okay? Then I don't have title for him, right? So I, without title, I'm trying to go to the next one. It allowed me to go, okay? Okay, because when I came here, I must give password. Password is another mandatory field, right? So I will give a password, Canada 10. So now if I try to go to the earlier one, I can go, but I didn't give this thing. It allowed me, right? In some other systems, it doesn't allow without the title. So logon data I gave. So the important one is password and 
the last name. Those two are very man those two are mandatory to create a user. Okay. This is username. This is a login name. Login name. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Then defaults are there. I can set defaults for him. Right? Uh, decimal is uh, like you say if 1234 1.234 so I don't like like that so I will say 1 comma 234 so I can change the format uh, because, because this one in some countries they use uh, for comma they use dot oh, okay, yeah <coughs> yeah yeah so we I don't want to use my, my underscore right this one right and date format I wanted to use uh, this format I like this format we say right right so my company may have some defaults so all those defaults can be put in a template user so when you're creating a user always you must copy from the template user then all the defaults will be going to any user you create in your department we say yeah yeah template is same like this right yeah then output device. So all the users in my department, I want them to use the, this output device. So I clicked on the, I clicked on this sign, this sign. Okay, clicked here. Or I press F4. Then I enter. Then I see the printers. If I have ten printers, it will show all the printers. So I will assign a, a default printer for him. Okay. So I have assigned a printer for him. Then when I say output immediately. Then as soon as you as soon as you send the job, it won't be saved uh, in the spool for some time for you to print. It will print immediately, okay. And if I don't say delete after output, your spool will be there always. So you can print tomorrow, day after tomorrow, after one month you can do, but it will occupy space. So if I want to delete immediately, I can delete, okay, right. And then uh, if you want a time zone okay, of the user, you can assign a time zone. So this is the same time zone for all the people. Everybody may like to have one start menu. You can put that log on language. Like, this guy uses French, so I can put French for him. right? If some uses French, some uses English, like that I can set up. If I have installed multiple languages. okay. Then parameters also I can add here. If suppose I went to a screen, when I went to that screen, I need certain parameters to be default, certain values to be default. So those things we can add here. We'll talk about this later. Then I can assign the roles to the user. This is the right way to do, right way to give permission, authorizations. So I assign roles to users. I can assign profiles by assigning profiles. So also I can give power to a user. For example, if I give an authorization called SAP all, he is the he is the superman in that system. He can do everything. Okay. So we'll talk about these things. What are the profiles which gives power to the user? Then also we can assign them to different group so that when I'm reporting something, I can report according to the group. When I want to check authorizations, I can check authorizations for this group. Oh, this group, this are the authorization for this group, what are the authorizations like that are easy, easier for my reporting and checking, which I will talk, discuss later and so on, right? So this is what we do when we are creating a user. So I created a user. I, I didn't give him SAP all, so I will delete it. I highlight here and then press this button to delete, okay? Delete. Then I gave him, uh, I, I, I didn't give him any permission, I, I, any authorization, I just created a user. How did this one, yeah, this one, this one, it, it didn't give any problem, right? They lost me. Only for the phone number it gives problem. Okay, so everything is done. So it's a basic user. Uh, what, my, what my plan is, I want to create this user and assign this user to, uh, map this user to a role. That's what I have in my mind, right? Okay, I save it. So now I have to send this information to the user. Yeah, roles has to be assigned to your user always. Always the roles has to we assign uh, authorization to users through through roles. It's correct. It's correct. Yeah. 